Hi friends, I wanted to share with you this mixed media creation. I took a few days to do this week on a 12 inch by 12 inch canvas. I sure wish there wasn't that point in what seems like every single mixed media project I attempt where I just wanna give up and throw it away, but this one was no exception. In fact, I've edited this video down to eliminate some of the hours of covering up, covering over what I tried and regretted. Uh, while still showing you my missteps so you don't have to repeat them, hopefully. As usual, I combed through my bin of images and papers to start it off. I've collected collaging materials and I just came up with too many, many of which are now buried in white gesso and no longer visible. Uh, but I started by writing a simple statement across the bottom of my canvas. The joy of the Lord is my strength and my inspiration. From there, I tore some pages from the Bible and hymnal I purchased from a thrift store some time ago, and I glued them on using a matte gel medium. Then I added other papers, magazine cutouts, and even used a, a used tea bag. Anything stained with coffee or tea makes a great neutral addition to a collage. Since I'm working on a canvas, I want to extend the images to cover the edges so that the piece won't necessarily need a frame when it's done. Once I got that first layer down, I used a water-soluble burnt sienna crayon to add drips of color between some of the papers. One thing I think I'll do differently next time is to be more settled on a color palette before I start and apply some of that color, either a paint or crayon or whatever I use for the color, to the base layer. It seems like I choose images that I like and apply them early only to end up covering them later. And I heard one artist say that each addition to the mixed media dictates or decides what the next one will be. So I'm a real planner and maybe that's why I, why I struggle with the freedom of mixed media. But if I can at least start with a color palette and kind of stick to that with the images I choose, I think I'll be better off. This is the first time I've used the Carandosh crayons. They're water soluble, which means they activate or dissolve with the water when it's added. At this point in the whole thing, it's looking very busy and chaotic, which I expect because I just glued down a bunch of stuff. So I started toning it down by adding some light textured mulberry paper over the Bible pages at the top. It's kind of... Um, transparent so you can still see it a little bit through uh, but you get that texture and and mute it down a bit and then I started blending in some white gesso to push a lot of the other elements back into the background I like the earthy tones in the different images so I added the branch on the top to the kind of tie it into the colors at the bottom though I'm not sure if it really worked so I toned it down a bit with the white gesso at this point, I was thinking of keeping the window and extending it by painting it in a continuation of it. Um, so I'm leaving it for now. I have a very liquid white acrylic ink, which is good for toning down or whiting out what doesn't work as well. So I dripped some of that under the profile of the girl to see how it looked. And then I saw that the top right corner looked like it needed something, so I wrote my proclamation there as well, maybe for a little encouragement at this point. And I liked the way the writing on the bottom looked through the transparency of the used tea bag, so I repeated it there. You're probably feeling like I was about right here. It's just pretty much a blob of colored squares with a white window. I decided to go in a landscape mode for the bottom section, breaking it up with some white strips of hymnal paper. Maybe some praise lyrics could help pull it together. I used the matte gel medium to lay them down. I guess they did inspire me to blur everything up top and basically start over while um, leaving just hints of the layer below. You'll notice that I like to apply the white gesso and blend it with my fingers, but I always have to manually enter a password on my laptop for days afterwards. Uh, usually I can do it with my fingerprint recognition, um, but it probably wears them down and I should more often use a brush than my fingers. 
So I'm pretty much starting over on the top portion, except for holding out hope that the window would start to make sense at some point. So I'm thinking more of a grounded soil below and a sky above, and I worked on bringing more light back into the top portion, starting with Bible pages. And stenciling is always another option, but I was aiming for a color to complement those lighter colors below, and that's not what I got when I started mixing an acrylic color. I should have stuck just with white gesso. I might have been happy with that. Needless to say, I let it dry and then blurred it out with a few drops of white acrylic ink and a spray of water to make it drip down. Next, I started adding more color, first highlights with the wrong shade of yellow gold, and then some of the burnt sienna and also an English red. I'm running the color along some of the papers, using it to create what I hope are hills. And I'm activating the crayons with a little of the matte gel medium, which not only activates them, but also sets them so that they become permanent. Then I began plan B for the top of the page. I had subscribed to an online mixed media class some time ago uh, by Lolly Mill, an artist in France. And thankfully, the first online lesson arrived and gave me some inspiration and some direction that helped me get unstuck. It was finally time to remove that window. I had a three-ply butterfly napkin and some tissue paper that was covered with gold dots that seemed to blend well together with the overall colors. I separated the top of the napkin from the other layers and used some transparent gesso to glue portions of it on a few areas along with uh, portions or patches of the tissue paper. And I let it all dry. Then I used a white jelly roll pen to write out some verses from Colossians, actually Colossians 1 verses 9 through 12 over the whole area. And just that handwriting and the scripture together, I thought would add a nice um, kind of detail that would blend a bit and hide into the background, but also know that it was there and create some interest. I needed to also identify a focal point. So I looked over my selection of butterflies and I had a whole sheet of them in a neutral color that I decided I could paint to fit with the color scheme of my project. I finally feel like it's all coming together and I'm over that just give up and throw it away stage. Uh, so now I wanna start building some more color. So I dabble a little acrylic uh, burnt sienna into a bottle cap and added a little water to thin it and blended some in at the top of the painting. And I also dipped a finger into it and dotted the sky with matching dots. I used one of the Stabilo all Stabilo All pencils. Um, it's a water soluble pencil and I scribbled in a ladder under th my three butterflies with it and went back with a small paintbrush and activated the pencil with water so that it darkened the color and um, spread it just slightly. Now I've got a ladder planted on solid ground with three soaring butterflies spreading their wings. I started this project with a notation that the joy of the Lord is my strength and my inspiration. And then I wrote out Colossians 1, 9 through 12 in the sky. I've been sitting in those verses for a few days and I've had them in mind since I began this project uh, before it was over. Um, but after the filming was done, I also added them to the hills, which you'll see in my final photo. They read, for this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you might have great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. So now I'm going to bring in a little more of that light. 
by stringing some stars and lights along the top. I used a black fine tip micron pen for the black strings holding the stars, which I then filled in with a white jelly roll pen. I added some white strands as well and dotted them with white lights and included some splatters of white little dots falling from the stars. With a black micron pen, I wrote out the words faith, hope, and love next to the butterflies, adding to the three printed phrases which are down in the hills that read, prepare your heart and mind, there is always something to be thankful for, and inspired by God. I added some white to the butterfly wings with acrylic ink and sprinkled what was left on the hills. I thought I was done, but after I stopped filming, I added some blue to the sky with watercolor. And as I mentioned, I added the Colossians verse to the hillside. It was a really rocky road getting here, but the beauty of mixed media is being able to pretty much erase and start over when you don't like something. You have to go into it expecting to get stuck along the way, I think, at least for me but determined to work through that phase when it comes along. Anyway, thank you so much for sticking with me through this one. God bless you, and I hope you have a wonderful time journaling and creating.